In this video, I'm talking about conformal space. To talk about conformal space, we need to talk about conformal maps in Rn first. Conformal maps are transformations that preserve angles. We know that there are essentially four types of conformal maps. Translations, dilations, rotations, and inversions. A key fact is that conformal maps always send hyperspheres slash hyperplanes to themselves. In fact, it's stronger than that. Conformal maps can be characterized by this property. There's just a tiny problem with inversions, and it's the fact that there are not well-defined maps of Rn. We're going to introduce conformal space to fix this. The idea is that we're going to add some extra points to Rn with the hope that conformal maps will become bijections of this extended space. The way to do this is not simple, as you can see. In particular, it requires the addition of two extra dimensions, x0 and xn plus 1. I'm going to try to clarify these extra dimensions. Why do, why do we need them? In the first step, we're going to apply inverse stereographic projection to Rn, and we're going to call the result of doing that sigma. Sigma is just the n sphere, and it has one extra point that Rn doesn't have, the north pole. Sigma is our first candidate for conformal space. The interesting thing is that under stereographic projection, hyperspheres slash hyperplanes of Rn are imaged to intersections of hyperplanes in Rn plus 1 with sigma. In other words, hyperspheres slash hyperplanes of Rn are in one-to-one -one correspondence with hyperplanes of Rn plus 1 cutting sigma. At this point, the only difference between hyperplanes and hyperspheres in Rn is whether the corresponding hyperplane of Rn plus 1 cuts sigma by the North Pole or it doesn't. Check this. Remember we said that conformal maps are those that preserve hyperplanes slash hyperspheres? This means that conformal maps of Rn are going to come from maps of Rn plus 1 that preserves hyper hyperplanes cutting sigma. The most general maps of Rn plus 1 that preserves hyperplanes cutting sigma turn out to be projective transformations, sometimes called collineations. To represent these projective transformations, you need to introduce a new coordinate, x0, to talk about homogeneous coordinates of the space. Conformal space will be the result of embedding sigma in projective space. When you homogenize the equation for sigma, you get the description of Cn that you were looking for. This definition of conformal space has been here for a while. It's well established. Even though there's some confusion around the pseudo-Euclidean case. Let's look at this in more detail. Consider R11. By this, I just mean R2 endowed with the quadratic form x1 squared minus x2 squared. In the book by Akivis Goldberg, Conformal Differential Geometry and Its Applications, they mention that conformal space C11 is obtained by supplementing R11 with the cone at infinity. But here's the thing. This is only step one, inverse stereographic projection. If anything, you should say that sigma is R11 plus the cone at infinity. My point is that in order to talk about conformal space, you need to embed sigma in projective space. When you do that, you will see that an S1 worth of points appear as the intersection of sigma with the ideal hyperplane. This mistake was already detected by Jadzik, and he talks about it thoroughly in his 2011 paper on conformal infinity and compactification of Minkowski space. So that's all for today. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyed it as much as I did.